Hi everyone, I'm Doug from DigiPen in Redmond. In this video, we'll start working on a space shooter style game. The space shooter is one of the oldest video game genres. The basic premise is simple. The player controls a hero that flies around and shoots. In many cases, the hero can only shoot in one direction. This simplicity makes it an excellent place to start when learning how to make video games. The first method we'll talk about for moving a hero in Scratch is the aptly named Move block, which nudges a sprite along in the direction they're facing. If we click this rocket ship's Move block, it moves a little bit. If we put a bigger number in the block's value field, the ship moves farther with each click. We can put in a negative number and it will move in the opposite direction. The move block can only move a sprite along a single axis at a time, though. If we want it to move up and down, for example, we'll need to turn the sprite by changing its direction. We can change the ship's direction here in the property area at the top of the sprite pane. Watch the ship. It rotates as we drag the arrow around. When we turn the ship like this, we can move it in different directions using the move block. You've probably noticed, though, that the ship isn't pointing in the same direction as the arrow in the direction picker, and it seems to move sideways. This looks a little awkward. Fortunately, there is an easy way to fix this. The direction picker allows us to specify that a sprite should not appear to rotate when its direction changes. This is perfect for a single direction space shooter. Now we can freely move the ship in any direction and it will always point straight up. Of course, the player won't control their hero with a direction picker. We should allow them to use the keyboard to fly around. Let's start by making the ship move while the player holds the spacebar. If the player is holding the spacebar, then we want to move. If, then. Scratch has an if-then block in the control category that will help us accomplish this goal. This block has a slot here for what we call a condition, and it has a mouth here where we can put code blocks. A condition is what we call something that is either true or false. For example, 5 is less than 100 is a condition that is true and 7 plus 7 equals 0 is a condition that is false. The code we put in the mouth is only run if the condition we put in the condition slot is true. We can check whether the player is holding the space bar with the key pressed reporter block found in the sensing category. If you click the key pressed block without holding any keys, it will report false. If you click it while holding the selected key, it will report true. We can put this block in the if-then condition slot. Now the code inside the mouth will only run if the chosen key is held. If you click the block without holding any keys, nothing will happen. But if you click it while holding the selected key, the ship moves. Now we're getting somewhere but we're still moving the hero by clicking code blocks. We need the code to execute automatically, over and over, as long as the game is running. This brings us to another important structure in game programming, loops. A loop is a section of code that runs automatically again and again many times. We'll use Scratch's forever loop block, found here in the control category. The forever block has a mouth where we can put code blocks. When the program reaches a forever block, it runs the code inside its mouth again and again until the game stops. If we put the if-then block inside the forever block's mouth, then as long as the game is running, the ship will move while the spacebar is held. Our task will be to get a hero that can fly around in all directions. We'll begin with a new Scratch project, which we'll name Scratch Invaders, 
in honor of one of the earliest space shooters. To begin, delete the default cat sprite by clicking its trash button in the sprite pane. Next, we need a hero. Click the Choose a Sprite button at the bottom of the sprite pane. Pick any sprite you like for your hero, but remember that later on we're going to make the hero shoot upwards on the screen, so choose something that won't look strange doing this. After you add it, feel free to change the size number here in the top of the sprite pane to make it bigger or smaller, and you may wish to disable its rotation by clicking the direction field and then clicking the do not rotate option on the right. And don't forget that many of Scratch's built-in sprites come with multiple costumes. You can change a sprite's costume here in the Costumes tab. When you're ready, click on the Code tab again. Let's begin programming the hero's movement. Click the light yellow Events category on the left. In the block palette, find the Start block also known as the When Green Flag Clicked block. Drag it into the code area. This block will allow us to begin the game by clicking the green flag. When the game begins, we should move the hero around depending on which keys the player is holding, and we should do this in a forever loop. Click the gold control category on the left and find the forever block in the block palette. Drag it into the code area and attach it to the bottom of the start block. Inside this loop, we'll check the keyboard and move the hero. This means, if a certain key is held, then the hero should move. Find the If Then block in the block palette and drag it into the code area. Next, we need to check a keyboard key. Click the light blue Sensing category on the left and find the Key Pressed block in the block palette. Drag it into the code area and drop it in the condition slot of the If Then block. We'll handle upward movement first, so choose the up arrow key from the drop down list. To move the hero upward, first we need to point them straight up and then we can move them with the Move block. Click the medium blue Motion category on the left and find the Point in Direction block in the block palette. Drag it into the code area and drop it inside the mouth of the If Then block. Click in the Value field of the Point in Direction block and a Direction Picker will appear. Drag the arrow so that it points straight up the number zero should be displayed. Now find the Move block in the block palette. Drag it into the code area and attach it to the bottom of the Point in Direction block inside the mouth of the If Then block. This If Then block handling upward movement is now complete. We can save time by duplicating it to add the remaining movement directions. Right click the If Then block and be careful not to right-click one of the blocks it contains, and then select Duplicate. Attach the new block to the bottom of the If Then block that is already in the code area. Let's update this block to handle downward movement. In the new Key Pressed block, select Down Arrow from the drop-down list. Then, click the Value field in the new Point in Direction block and point the direction picker straight down. The number 180 should be displayed. We can save time again by duplicating both of these if-then blocks and adapting them to handle sideways movement. Right-click the top if-then block and select Duplicate. This should make a copy of the full stack of both blocks. Attach this copied stack to the bottom of the original stack. Set up the two new key pressed blocks so that the upper one checks the right arrow key and the lower one checks the left arrow key. Set up the two new point in direction blocks so that the upper one points straight to the right 
the number 90 should be displayed, and the lower one points straight to the left, the number negative 90 should be displayed. The movement code is almost complete. We just need to put it inside the forever block. You can move the whole stack at once by dragging the top if-then block. Drag the stack into the mouth of the forever block. Now, click the green flag. You can move your hero around with the arrow keys. What if we change our mind about how fast the hero moves? The speed of the hero is determined by the number in the move block, but we have four of those, and right now they all say 10. In order to change the hero's speed properly, we'll have to change all four of them to have the same number. This is a great opportunity to use a variable. Click the orange variables category on the left, and then click the make a variable button. Name the variable hero speed. We need to give the hero speed variable an appropriate value, so find the set block in the block palette and drag it into the code area. We need to set this value just once at the very start of the game, so attach it between the start block and the main forever loop block. Select hero speed from the variable drop-down list and enter a number in the set blocks value field. Now find the hero speed variables reporter block in the block palette. Drag four copies of it into the code area and drop them in the value fields of the move blocks. Now, when you click the green flag, your hero will move with whatever speed you set in the hero speed variable. Have some fun experimenting with different numbers until you find something you like. Let's recap what we covered in this video. First, we learned that the move block moves a sprite in the direction it's pointing and the point in direction block chooses this direction. Then, we learned how to disable a sprite's rotation by selecting the Do Not Rotate option in the direction picker. Next, we covered the If Then block, which runs the code it contains only if its condition is true. We used the Key Press block to check whether the player is holding a key on their keyboard. Next, we saw how a forever loop can be used to execute a set of code blocks again and again as long as the game is running. Finally, we applied our knowledge of variables to make a hero speed variable, which we used to control the speed of the hero. In the next video, we'll learn how Scratch handles numbers.